Alafina Foya stepped out with his beautiful Igbo wife, Oluru Choma, together with his other 12 wives, and Pastor McDavis, who came out before with heavy allegations against Apostle Johnson Suleiman, saying that he allegedly slept with his wife in a hotel, has come back again to apologize to him, and Nigerians are marveled. Hi guys, you are watching M Chiki series. If you are a joining subscriber, thank you for your support. I quite appreciate that. It's good to have you around again. And if you are new to this channel, thank you for clicking on this video. Make yourself comfortable as we get right into the gist and also remember to hit on that red subscribe button and turn your notification bell on that way you get our latest updates so recently a laughing of for you stepped out with his beautiful damsel together with his other 12 wives an Igbo lady Lori Choma so finally he has added an Igbo lady to his harem of beautiful wives a laughing of for you is a popular monarch in Yoruba land up till now I'm not even sure people know how many wives he has but some people say 12 some people say 13 finally he has added the new addition who is Oluru Choma, an Igbo lady. If you can remember, I think last year, rumor had it that two of his beautiful wives left his palace, then ran away practically. Oluri Baderat ran to Lagos and when Anu also came out to declare that if anything happens to her, the palace should be held responsible. So the irony of the whole thing is that the more the ladies are leaving the palace, the more the new ones are coming in. So they are go, so they are come, barrack day. So what is driving them or what is attracting them to the palace is what nobody knows and what is chasing them is also what nobody knows. The monarch should be in his 80s. I think he'll be 83 years old. This doesn't prevent young girls to flock around him. They flock around him like bees. Even when he said that he never married any of them, that after paying school fees, all of them will be falling over hills to be with him, to be in his palace. So this is making a lot of people to ask some questions. What's making these women cling to him? Because you know, looking at his age, he will not be very great in the Ozaza room. People are asking questions. What are all these ladies looking in his shokoto? It wouldn't surprise anybody if you see more women entering the palace. Some women, what they're after is money. Once they see money, they don't care about the other room. What the man is doing in the other room, highest they can do is to find a younger boy that they will engage in and we get her satisfied and that's it. They don't really bother. Some women are so in love with money that they love themselves, they don't really care. All they want is somebody who can give them that good life, even if it's an ancestor. Even the man is walking down his grave with sticks. They don't bother about that. They're fine. That's not really their cup of tea. Their own is to get their life sorted at that point. She knows the reason why she's with the Alafin, and Alafin knows the reason why they are together. Recently, they were spotted out together in an event, and people never even knew that the king has got 13 wives from the story she got married to him late last year it was when was you king was you ayendema she started singing his praises and called her olorichoma that people got to know that she is the latest amara in town she is the latest wife added to the harems of wife of alafin of oyo and i forgot to add beautiful harem of wives of alafin of oyo because all of them fresh you they fine they yellow well well all of them be like tomato just the man really get high taste he get eyes for better thing Shuma is said to be in her late 20s and she's from eastern part of the country she's also fair and beautiful like other wives so congratulations to Allah Fino for you and more wives to him i can say so moving on to mark davis and johnson suleiman which has been a movie or nollywood movie which has been playing before our very eyes is getting to up to one month now and it has been very entertaining mark davis started by accusing suleiman placing all allegations on him saying that he slept with the wife he took the wife away and gave the wife a church in abuja which made a lot of people to conduct interview for them him and the wife but unfortunately the two stories never aligned there is never conversion point between the two stories each of them had a very convincing story on their own and i'm not saying that they lied there are atom of truth in what they're saying but just for you to pick whatever you want to pick 
and leave the rest to them. So after everything all said and done, Mark Davis also came out with more threats, asking Nigerian to defend him, to fight for him in this battle. He kept on releasing videos, even the one he talked about, the role he played in making sure that Stephanie Otobo eventually came out to apologize to Suleiman and her mother also came to Suleiman's church in Awuchi to apologize. He released also an audio saying how Suleiman was threatening him, which Suleiman also came out to debunk saying that the audio originally belonged to him, that he was talking to a lady and when you listen to the audio of Suleiman, you will hear at the end where he mentioned Stephanie and threatening and cursing the lady out, how she will make the lady to disappear because he was asking the lady who are the besties that she gave to him that he want to know the besties that she's claiming to have given to him and I thought probably he was talking to Stephanie Otobo, that's my opinion anyway. So yesterday or two days ago, Mark Davis also released two videos where he was apologizing to Suleiman, saying that all the things he said, that he feels sorry for them. But there is something I noticed in that video. His body language, he was so calm, he wasn't so excited, like the way he was speaking the first time he started that case. And again, all the allegations he made in his first video, he never withdrew any of them. He only said that he apologized, that he was on a surgeon, and uh, he decided to apologize to him so that peace will reign and stuff like that. So I still believe that what Whatever he said in the previous video in the first video that he still stand by it because otherwise he would have debunked all of them but he never said it was false allegation he simply apologized so i'll let you guys listen to him the second video i will not play it on this platform because suleiman and his group they started claiming videos that don't belong to them whenever you mention his name he will claim the video to the extent that he claimed videos of other people that interviewed pastor mike and the wife not necessarily his celebration tv video as he's fond of of using his celebration tv to claim videos but right now they're using african nolly pictures to claim videos and the way they do that is that they practically steal the video the video disappears off the internet so he knows the game is playing as far as i'm concerned john c suleiman if he's very innocent as he claimed he will not be stealing videos he will not be using african nolly pictures to be claiming videos on youtube mike as far as i know is not innocent of this by his own admission he claimed that he has worked with suleiman and he has been the one doing the dirty job like during the time of stephanie tobo he was the one he knew the role he played in bringing stephanie tobo's mom from the village warrior to Aochi to come and apologize and also the way they met Stephanie to come down to Nigeria to also apologize so based on that these two people that are working hand in hand so him coming out now and talking about forgiveness and his papa in the Lord makes me to wonder if he was paid to do this apology did somebody pay him to do it because from the body language he says a lot about what he's experiencing right now and remember he said that Suleiman put a lien on his account so nobody knows whether they've raised the lien but it has been unfrozen so there are so many missing links and dots here if you can connect it the way you can if you follow the story you read in between lines you read the salient point and you also read body language eye contact then you'll be able to understand what is going on here good evening um, fellow nigerians and everyone around the world i in view of um the issue that has been ongoing for the past weeks now. I have personally been on um, um, a spiritual sojourn and um, I have received um, instructions from the Lord to take this step I'm taking right now. So personally, I want to apologize to my father in the Lord, Apostle John C. Suleiman, and Mama Lizzie John C. Suleiman, and um, Omega Fire Ministries around the world, you know, for the frictions that, um, you know, were generated, and probably in the manner in which I reached out for, for help. I want to say I'm deeply sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you guys just heard him. I said it before initially that 
I don't trust Pastor David Mark. The same way I don't trust Apostle Suleiman. All these people are together in this business. And he even said in the last video he posted that if Apostle Suleiman doesn't release the lien he has on his account, he will expose their dealings. He will expose what they did that made Stephanie Otobo to come and apologize. So these people, I don't trust them. They're just bed of a feather. The issue is this. These two people can never be trusted and cannot be trusted. Pastor David Mark, based on what he said before, that Apostle Suleiman is threatening him. He is trying to remove him, that he slept with the wife. Now, he doesn't talk about all those things. He just came up with apology. Is it that Suleiman settled him? When I made my video, I made it clear that these two people can never be trusted. Mike has been in the system for so many years. I think close to 16 years. For him to come out now and start talking about their secrets in Omega Fire Ministry, it's better for him now to tell Nigerians the truth, what is really going on, what has really transpired within these few weeks that nobody had about him that he has gone underground. You better know it that Mike cannot be trusted. Dead. All of them are working together. This is their business. They know how to go about their business. And having said that, let me know what you guys think about the whole drama that is playing out. Also about a lot of for you acquiring women as property. But some people will say it's the women that allow him to acquire them. He did not force anybody. And he once said that he pays school fees for these girls. And before you know it, they pack their things saying that they want to live with him. But nobody knows what is really behind that. Is it just because he pays school fees? Or is there any other influence that nobody has been able to see so i would like to know what you guys think about this i'm gonna sign off here stay healthy and safe remember to share this video with family and friends if you love it and subscribe to this channel if you've not done already and i'm gonna catch you guys in my next video bye and remain blessed